Hey, this is Tim, Chicago Sports Porsche Pros out here in the garage. This is a uh, turnbuckle for a, um, I'm working on the power steering right now. This, by the way, is one of those um, uh, reservoirs, but this is an aftermarket one. And when I got this and looked at it, I'm like, you know, I hate to put that on there. Um, <clears throat> it's made the right size, looks the right size, doesn't have the same feel, doesn't have the same markings as the Porsche one. So I think I'm going to leave that off. It also came with these hoses that are supposedly... Um, the right size for this car. I think it comes from a BMW actually, but it does go down and turn. I'd have to cut it off a little bit, so I thought, you know what, I'll save that for later and work on that because I had a little bit of oil leaking. There is a Porsche bulletin, by the way, for the connection on these cars. Um, I talked to some people in the Porsche clubs had problems with leaks. I don't know if they ever got that resolved or not. <clears throat> but anyway, so what I'm doing right now, I want to point out a couple things. This right here is actually the um, uh, adjustment for the uh, power steering belt. And what happens is you have um, one goes one way, one goes the other. So if you're familiar with this, it's like, okay, whatever. If you're not familiar with this, these can be a real pain. One, because they're threaded in opposite directions. It's a little bit like this bike that I have in the background where the cranks are threaded in opposite directions. So when you're pushing on it, it doesn't you know, come loose. So they thread that with the left hand thread, uh, for example, so that you don't have that problem. So in the same regard, what the turnbuckle does is it actually, see, this one's normal. So this is the normal thread on this side, but if I go to this side and, and turn it the normal way, you know, um, clockwise or lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, so this would be righty-tighty, it's going out, not in. So this is the oddball here, and this is the one that's normal threaded. So I think that even the, this one here, I don't know about this, particular nut if that's a unique thing or how that actually works if it's threaded left hand thread or not but the, the um, this eyelet definitely is now here's the problem somebody had this before cranked it down way too hard and it took a little bench time to correct that and I'll show you what some of my techniques for doing that to get this loosened up so I can have an adjustment and I'm not quite done yet I just thought I'd take a little minute to show you what I go through on these cars to try to um, take care of things. So this one's, you know, um, one of the things that I, I would suggest to everyone when you're pulling parts off, just take a little time and shine them up, clean them up, get the grease off, get the chunks off, take the years off, and you'll find that you have a, pretty much of a, a decent part. Now you can buy these and replace these. They do get a little <clears throat> pricely like everything. Um, one other thing I'd suggest is take a, you know, a file and put it on the, the thin side and just give it a stroke wherever you see any of these um, you know 30 years worth of wrenching on these where the the bolt is actually getting a little bit uh, stripped now these are salvageable even though it's worn down a lot you might have to drop these are uh, 13s and it does still work that way by the way if you can ever get the top part on one of these things it definitely turns much better but you can't slip it over that but whenever I'm really trying to break something loose I always use the box end or the instead of the open end, whatever the terminology is for that. All right, <clears throat> so what I had to do was, because this was jammed and stuck, and it's almost like throw it away and start over, but I messed with it, and I used my uh, favorite go-to WD-40, and I want to uh, put a little plug in there for that, because, you know, I talk to people, and they say, oh, WD-40, no good. You know what? Those are the same people who have stripped out bolts, broken bolts, can't finish projects, and give up. <laughs> so, look, this dissolves rust it dissolves grease it dissolves so much it lubricates i don't care if it lubricates or not technically but let me tell you if you put it on anything here and you have a rusty if you're doing restoration you can't be without this i'm sorry to say just a fact so anyway that loosened up all this um and once i got one off what i did was i actually went to the other end of this and used the hose nozzle held it down like this and squirted it in there and just let it soak down in these this is a penetrating you know, effect these has. Um, and then I used my bench vise and I got this on here. I uh, forget how I actually did it. I started on one end, tried the other end. I think I actually ended up holding it like this. And then I had to do the old, um, put two wrenches on it. And what I suggest is, because you don't want to over force these bolts to get them off. They can be a real pain. I mean, these things suck. There's also one on, on it's a great idea, but it, they suck in, in method but there's another one down there on the um, AC alternator uh, that you have to take care of as well so anyway if you're a mechanic you already know all this stuff 
But um, basically, if you're not, you can get into some real headaches. And if it's not something you do every day. So what I do is I put them just a little ways apart like that. And then I would um, make sure they're secure. And then you squeeze it with your hand. Put some, put some you know, manly force on there. But not, you know, to the point where this strips. So you can feel it. This is where you have to use your brain when you're doing mechanical stuff. I mean, this kind of stuff is not for dummies. So you basically have to do it one way. If it doesn't go that way, flip it over and try it the other way. So I was doing this and I was seeing that one way this was flexing, the other way it wasn't. One way I had a little bit of give, the other way it didn't. And when it gives just a little bit, take some more of this, squirt it up here, grab some paper towels. I always have a, see my rolls are always empty because I'm always using them. And spray it. And even when you spray it, I usually put, you know, very little, like, Come on, let's spray, babe. It's just like that. Clean up a little bit, let it soak in, and you're gonna refresh this to like a new feel. I mean, look at that, it spins. Come on, guys. WD-40 is awesome. It's not just hillbilly crap. It is uh, something that is, we always had it around the house when I grew up, I love it. <clears throat> All right, fix many squeaky things. Broke a lot of rust, and there you go. So basically now I'm in the point where I can go back in, I'm gonna take these um, take a good close look. I see one little area there. What I will actually do is um, don't do them both at the same time so you got to keep them. This is the, the oddball one. So these things are fairly long. These things can break by the way. I can't say that I've ever done it before but I could feel it happening and thought oh crap better not break this. So what I would do is um, either take this put it down on the bench and do a like a get this flat and try to take your hand again this is sort of the skill part do it like that you could use some fine sandpaper don't round the edges but knock those things down I mean this one is really foobarred up a lot um, the other option is if I needed to I could take this on the little you know all I have is a little four or five inch bench vise but it's bolted down to my top and then you know, go one way or the other and try to knock that down and keep your vice, I mean, keep the, uh, keep this flat and knock those things down and you've refreshed your bolts and hopefully I got some sharp edges that would actually work, but I could turn it a little bit, go back. I mean, these things take time. It's not just wham, bam, and I'm done and on to the next subject. Sometimes these things take a little bit of time. I say I saw my neighbor has a, BMW convertible just rolled in off a trailer truck. Doesn't run yet very well, but I think I inspired him to get going on a project. So that's kind of the what I do with my cars, work on them. So you can see that this is starting to take away and it's giving me a nice sharp edge on that. But I mean, it probably will stay a 13 if I do it right. And you want to keep this perfectly level so that you can, once you once you have that, keep this level. If it was turned a little bit and you're going level here, you just screwed up. And I do a very light touch. This is like, you know, fine dining when you hold the utensil just right. But you have to kind of, if you bear down on it, you're going to knock it out. What you really want to do is just knock off the high spots. So it's just kind of a light touch. sharpened up the edges of the bolt and taken away some of those round things and the reason I would save a bolt like this is because I haven't tried it but if it is a left hand thread you're not going to find those anywhere soon so you'd have to go out and spend the 40-50 bucks to buy a brand new turnbuckle or hunt down a left hand thread 13 millimeter 10 8 1.25 whatever the hell it is okay so I think I'm going to stop there, I pretty much got this thing resolved. I was a little bit worried about it. I've gone through this car now. Um, this is the 944S. So this is uh, um, uh, quite a few things I've done. I'll try to catch up on that. I've been busy with things. I've got one car in the shop right now having a, a transmission um, uh, plate put in. It was an automatic and the, the plate um, got old and broke. So anyway, that's it for now. This is Tim, Shrock House Bros, Porsche Pros. Thanks for watching.